We already spent a separate video on constraint optimization under equality constraints. In this video I'm going to build upon this video, but now consider the problem of optimization under inequality constraints. Now we just saw that when optimizing maximum margin classifiers we need to solve a convex optimization problem under inequality constraints. Now we will be able to solve this problem by first formulating a dual optimization problem and then it turns out that the solution to this dual problem gives us eventually the solution to the original problem which we started off with. Now the starting point is the same as before in the case of optimization with uh, equality constraints. So when we considered a problem of maximizing a particular function f with respect to x subject to a constraint that um, x could only lie on this particular level set. So it could only lie on this red uh, curve. Then we showed that we could solve this problem uh, by introducing a Lagrangian and then uh, the stationary points of this Lagrangian in the, in the end gave us the solution to this uh, problem. The main idea was that we were looking for points on this level set uh, that were maximal with respect to uh, f of x. And we saw that such a point can no longer improve its values for, for f if both uh, the gradient with respect to f or uh, the gradient of f with respect to x, I mean, um, is perpendicular to my level set as well as uh, the gradient to my uh, constraint is perpendicular to the level set. Now the gradient of my constraint uh, is always perpendicular to the constraint surface. That's really implicit in the definition of this uh, level set. Uh, but then the gradient uh, with respect to f is only perpendicular uh, to my level set if I can no longer improve my, my point. And the idea was that if I consider a point which isn't optimal, my gradient points in some direction and I could still move a bit along my level set to improve my value, uh, function value uh, f of x. So as long as my gradient of f if it isn't fully perpendicular to my level set, I can still move my point along this level set until it is indeed fully perpendicular and then uh, there's no improvement anymore to be made to moving to the left or to the right, for example. Okay, and that told us that at such an optimal location, uh, both the gradient of f and the gradient of g are aligned. So they're either in the pointing in the same direction or they have opposite signs. Uh, so we have this uh, Lagrange multiplier that makes sure that this uh, equation is satisfied. And then the approach was that we define a, a Lagrangian function um, whose stationary points give me the final solutions. Because if I find a point uh, which satisfies uh, this, so the gradient of my Lagrangian with respect to x and lambda is zero, then I satisfy both my original constraint because the gradient with respect to lambda gives me uh, g of x equals zero. So indeed, so this satisfies my original constraint and the gradient to x of my uh, Lagrangian gives me the following optimality constraint. Okay, so the solutions to this constraint maximization problem can be obtained by looking for the stationary points of my Lagrangian. Now in the optimization with inequality constraints, uh, things uh, get slightly different, right? So now we optimize a function f of x, where my g of x uh, is not necessarily equal to zero, but it can also be larger than zero. So these, this kind of constraints leads to regions in which my uh, solution can be found. And such regions are indicated in this figure, in this, this red uh, shaded area. And then we can identify two type of situations. Uh, one is that suppose my function f of x has its optimal location uh, around x, x, b. Then this means that I can find a stationary point of f of x. So this optimizer really satisfies my constraint g of x. So there's not, nothing much that I have to do about this. But there may of course also be points where actually the, the global optimal location of my function f um, would be, let's say, somewhere over here. Then I have to really think carefully about my constraints. So I cannot just select this point. So this, this point is an optimizer of f of x, but it doesn't satisfy this constraint. So my uh, solution will be found on this boundary. And then we actually we deal with the constraint optimization problem that we just saw. Namely that uh, both the gradient of f of x have to, has to be parallel as well as the gradient with respect to uh, my uh, constraint function. Because if, if they weren't parallel, then it means I could still update my point and move into the direction that optimizes uh, f of x. Okay, so that tells me that if my optimal point lies outside of this region, then actually uh, the optimal point that satisfies the constraint will, will lie on, on the boundary. And actually we have that this needs to be satisfied, that this gradient uh, 
uh, of my function and the gradient of my constraint, uh, they are uh, anti-parallel in fact. And this is an important difference compared to the previous case uh, where we just said, okay, my gradient of f and gradient of g both have to be uh, perpendicular to my level set. Now uh, we see that also my gradient of x has to be anti-parallel to a g of x. Because suppose my uh, gradient was pointing inwards, yeah, then I could, uh, of course, move in this direction and uh, end up in my, uh, well, uh, globally optimal point. So if indeed my uh, function f of x has its optimal location outside the region, then it means that the gradient of f of x points outwards. Okay, so now we have this additional constraint that my Lagrangian multiplier uh, has to take on a positive value. So let me write that down. Okay, so that is similar as we've seen before, uh, but now really remember this in this inequality constraint optimization, this mu can only take on uh, positive values, this Lagrangian uh, multiplier. And then in the end, we work with the exact same uh, definition of my uh, Lagrangian. I'm going to call it a primal Lagrangian because in the next slide, I'm going to also look at a dual Lagrangian. So my primal Lagrangian is the same as before. It's just that now my mu has to take on a positive value. And then it follows that the stationary point of my uh, primal Lagrangian satisfies my original constraint if indeed the, the obtained uh, values from mu also uh, take on a positive value or zero. And it turns out that we can formulate this into a max-min or a min-max uh, optimization problem um, where we uh, maximize my Lagrangian with respect to x. So we really want to maximize this function with respect to x, but we want to minimize uh, these mu parameters. And we will see in a minute why, do, why we want to minimize with respect to mu. Uh, but whatever we do, we need to satisfy these constraints, right? So this uh, follows from the discussion that we just had that mu is either zero or it's positive. This follows from that we have to satisfy my uh, original constraint. And this is what we call uh, complementary slackness, that at least one of the two has to be zero, right? Because if g of x is uh, bigger than zero, then I'm inside this region I do, and I do not want to enforce this uh, particular constraint. And conversely, if, if mu is uh, bigger than zero, then actually enforcing this constraint, meaning that my point has to lie somewhere on this uh, boundary. So g of x has to equal a zero in that case. Okay, so we're still considering this problem of maximizing my function f of x subject to the constraint that it needs to lie inside this uh, particular region or on its boundary. And then uh, the recipe for solving this is via this max min uh, uh, problem, where I need to take into account that these KKT condition, so that's what these uh, constraints are called. Uh, they, uh, they are called uh, the Karushkun Tucker uh, conditions, that these conditions need to be uh, satisfied uh, at all times. And then the idea behind this approach relies on the definition of a dual Lagrangian. So this dual Lagrangian is defined as the maximum of, of, over x of my uh, primal Lagrangian. So my primal Lagrangian is given as follows, right? So my original f of x plus uh, the Lagrange multiplier times my uh, constraint. And it is a function of both my uh, primal variable x and my dual variable uh, mu. And then my dual Lagrangian is defined as taking the maximum of my primal Lagrangian with respect to x. And this gives me a function that only depends on mu now. So it no longer depends on x because I already took the maximum over this thing. So I'm considering this dual Lagrangian, which is a function only of mu. And we can obtain this dual Lagrangian via the following steps. So first of all, uh, we want to maximize this with respect to x. So we're uh, going to find, look for stationary points for which uh, the gradient of my Lagrangian with respect to x is going to be uh, equal to zero, because then I have at least found a, a local maximum. And depending on your problem, you then also have obtained your, your global maximum for this uh, Lagrangian. Uh, but then this constraint can be used to eliminate x from my primal Lagrangian. So that uh, I'll give an example in the next video when we consider the specific case of deriving support vector machines. But in general, you can use this constraint then to, to eliminate x from my Lagrangian. And that gives me a dual Lagrangian, which only depends on mu. And it actually then follows that this particular dual Lagrangian gives you an upper bound for this uh, function value. So we're looking for the maximal function value f of x. Under this constraint, it turns out that this dual Lagrangian gives you an upper bound on this uh, maximum value as a function of mu. And the idea is as follows. So we're looking for uh, maximal values of f of x, 
uh, but we only consider points that satisfy this constraint. So let's call, let's call these points uh, that satisfy this constraint, let's call them feasible points, and I'm going to indicate them with uh, x prime. So x prime are points which satisfy this constraint. And then, uh, well, let's, let's pick a particular point, f of x prime, that gives me a particular optimal value. And then depending on whatever x uh, prime I pick, it, it can be a low value or a high value. And we're actually looking for the highest possible value f of x uh, prime. Now let's call this particular point, let's call it uh, p star. So the solution to my primal problem. So I'm going to indicate the solution to my primal uh, maximization problem. I'm going to indicate it with uh, p star. Now, when I look at this uh, definition of the Lagrangian, it's always f of x plus mu times g of x. And both mu and g of x are always pos positive for these uh, points that satisfy the constraint, right? So my Lagrangian will always be uh, larger than the actual value f of x, actually bigger or equal. So that's basically this thing. So uh, whenever I pick a particular x prime, it's a Lagrangian, so the Lagrangian x prime of mu is going to be larger than uh, my uh, f of x prime. Okay, and then in the formulation of my dual Lagrangian, for a fixed value of mu, I'm going to pick uh, the maximal solution of this Lagrangian. So I'm maximizing over my uh, variable x. So this dual variable, so this dual Lagrangian will always give me an upper bound of the actual um, actual primal point, right? It will always be larger than, than this point because we have uh, these terms which are always uh, positive. Now the main idea is to uh, come up with uh, the smallest upper bound for my original primal problem. So now I can vary mu and for some mu I get a, a large uh, value of this as dual uh, Lagrangian, so a, a high upper bound. Uh, but we want to lower and lower and we, get a, we want to get the tightest possible um, upper bound on my solution. So that's what we do over here. So we want to minimize this dual Lagrangian with respect to mu, as this gives me an upper bound on my uh, original uh, solution. So uh, we minimize over mu, and that gives us, for example, this dual solution. So the mu that actually gave me the minimal uh, upper bound. Okay, and we call this a difference between uh, the minimal uh, dual uh, Lagrangian uh, versus the maximal primal uh, solution. We call this difference the duality gap. And in general, in general, we have weak duality. So we always have that uh, the dual Lagrangian gives us an upper bound on uh, my primal uh, solution. But in our particular case, we work with problems in the support vector machine setting. We work with problems that are convex and for which we actually have strong duality, meaning that um, the minimizer of my dual uh, corresponds with the maximizer of my primal problem. Okay, and that's summarized over here. So actually for almost all convex problems, we have that we have strong duality. And this means that if we solve the dual problem, so if we solve the problem of minimizing, uh, so this is a dual problem, of minimizing my dual Lagrangian, still subject to the constraint that my mu should be bigger than zero. But if I have solved this problem, this dual problem, then I obtain a optimal parameter for mu. And then I can just plug this in my Lagrangian, fix mu at this point, and then maximize my Lagrangian with respect to x. And that gives me my final um, solution to this uh, original problem, on, to this original constraint optimization problem. Okay, so such constraint optimization problem heavily rely on the notion of a dual Lagrangian, because this dual Lagrangian gives us an upper bound, and if we can reduce this upper bound, then we get closer and closer to the optimal uh, solution of my original problem. And in many cases, especially the case that we consider, um, we see that we can actually obtain the tightest upper bound as possible, meaning that if we solve the dual problem, we also have solved the primal problem. Okay, so then the recipe for solving such constraint, uh, so this such inequality constraint maximization problem is as follows. So first we define the Lagrangian. Um, that's straightforward, just formulate my constraints in this uh, form, that g of x has to be equal than, uh, bigger or equal than zero. Then we compute the dual Lagrangian by maximizing my Lagrangian with respect to x. So we find a stationary point of this with respect to x and use it to eliminate x from my primal Lagrangian. And that gives me my dual Lagrangian. Okay, and when we have obtained the dual Lagrangian, we're going to minimize it with respect to mu, uh, still under this constraint that mu has to be bigger or equal than zero. And when we've solved this, we can solve for the, the, the primal problem. 
Now note that we're still uh, minimizing with under constraints, but this uh, minimization problem is, uh, is always going to be convex, uh, first of all, and it's generally much easier than my original problem, uh, primarily due to the fact that my dual Lagrangian now only depends on these Lagrangian multipliers and not uh, on both x and mu. So this is a function just of mu and it gives us an upper bound, so it doesn't directly give us the solution uh, x, um, it just tells us which mu parameters should I choose uh, in order to solve this uh, maximization problem in the end. Okay, that's all you need to know for now. Um, so when we solve such inequality constraint optimization problem, we will define a dual Lagrangian and a dual problem uh, because minimizing this means that we have the tightest uh, upper bound for my original problem. And in the convex optimization cases that we consider in this course, we actually ob obtained a solution to my primal problem if we solve this dual problem first.